Hello everybody, how are you doing? This is Mr. Douse. On this video, I'm going to start solving fairly challenging problems when it comes to solving equations. Now when I say solving equations, basically we're solving for a variable. Now all my questions, there's a total of six of them, uh, involve me um, solving for x, but x could be um, uh, a instead or b or y. So all these are just using x. Uh, and then uh, I'm going to solve these using four steps here. Now the first step it says combine like terms on either side of the equal sign. That's rarely used and that is only going to be used on problem number six, but I'll explain it as I go. Step two, use addition or subtraction to get the variable to only one side of the equal sign. That's going to start being used on problems four, five, and six. So if you want to get to that problem, you can kind of skip ahead. Uh, step three and four though are going to be used for every single one of these problems. So, so let me just look at number one and I'll start applying these steps and we'll kind of get things going from there. So solve for x. So number one, I have 4x minus 7 equals 13. And my goal here is to, uh, when, when I'm done with this, is when I have x on one side equals a number. And ultimately what that means is whatever value that I, I get for my answer, I should be able to plug it back into the equation and it should be able to balance out um, the equation here. And if you know it right offhand, what number you plug in here to um, left, the left side equal 13, well then maybe you know that's the way to do it. But typically, it takes a little bit of work to find it out. So let's kind of look through this one here. So it so says step one, combine like terms on either side of the equal sign. Well, these terms are not the same, so I can't combine them. There's 13 here, so there's nothing to combine, so I can skip that. Step two, use addition or subtraction to get the variable to only one side of the equal sign. I have the variable on one side already. So when I get down here to number four and five and six, notice how the variables on both sides here. That is when I need to apply this step here to get this x on, on only one side of the equation. But step three is gonna be useful here. So it says, um, step three, use addition or subtraction to get the constant to the opposite side of the equal sign as the variable. So the, the variable's on this side, so I'm gonna keep it here, but I wanna get this constant. A constant is a number that's next to the variable that has no uh, variable uh, as attached to it. This number is, is a constant. So the goal is to get this guy to cancel out, and it says to use addition or subtraction. And the idea is I wanna get this negative seven to be equal zero. So what do I need to add or subtract to this side of the equation to make this negative seven essentially equal zero? Well, that's pretty obvious, I need to add seven. So if I take negative seven and I take the opposite of it and I apply that to this equation, that's gonna cancel this out and that'll end up becoming zero. But since we're talking about uh, equation, equations mean the left and the right side need to balance out. So if I alter the equation on the left here by adding seven, I need to do the same thing on the right. So the four X goes down and stays on the left side of the equation, but this 13 plus seven now becomes a 20. Because again, this canceled out here. The negative seven plus seven canceled out. So that's step three. Step four says use multiplication or division to cancel out the coefficient in front of the variable. Coefficients are the numbers that are in front of the, the x or the variable. So I need to use uh, either multiplication or division to get this four x to go away, or the four to go away in front of the x. So uh, basically what we do is we're gonna do the opposite of what's happening here to get it to cancel out. So I have four times x. So an opposite of, of times or multiplying is you divide. So ultimately you divide by whatever the coefficient is and you do it to both sides because again we've got to balance out the equation and that is how you simplify and get x by itself. Because if you take four divided by four, like if I take four in my calculator and I divide it by four, you get one. Any number divided by itself equals one. Even if it's a, a negative number, you still get one. So that happens no matter what. So this four over four simplifies down to a one and one times x is really just x, but 20 divided by four is five. So that should be the right answer. I say should because we should check our answer here to make sure it's right. So it says check your answers. So I'm gonna plug in the five into this x And I get four times five, which is 20, because we're doing PEMDAS, right? Um, we've got to do multiplication before we do any kind of addition subtraction in this case. Uh, and so I get 12 minus seven is 13. So 13 equals 13. So since this balances out, I know that five has to be the right answer. So number two, negative two X plus three equals negative 11. Same idea, it says um, we, we don't have to combine like terms on either side. We don't need to worry about getting the variable to one side that's already there. 
but I need to use step three, use addition or subtraction to get the constant to the opposite side of the equal sign as the variable. So I have this negative 2x plus 3 equals negative 11. Um, I need to do the opposite of what this is doing to the equation to get it to cancel out. So instead of adding 3, I need to subtract 3. So because 3 minus 3 cancels out to be 0, end up with negative 2x. And then negative 11 minus 3 is negative 14. And make sure whatever you do to the left side of the equation, you do the right side or vice versa. Uh, now, keep in mind here, if you look at the previous problem, we had a negative 7, so we added 7 to cancel out. This was a plus 3. We had to subtract 3 to cancel out. So again, you're always going to do the opposite sign, basically. Now, from here, uh, I have a negative 2x equals negative 14. This is negative 2, x, negative 2 times x. So the opposite of multiplying is dividing. So we're going to divide by negative 2. That negative 2 over negative 2 becomes a 1, which is 1 times x, which is just x. And if you take negative 14 divided by negative 2, a negative divided by a negative gives you a positive, and that ends up being a positive 7. So x is 7. And let's plug that into the equation just to kind of double check and make sure it works. So if I have negative 2 times 7 is negative 14 plus 3, does that equal negative 11? Oops, let me zoom down. And so if I, if I were to combine these, negative 14 plus 3, we get negative 11, and that does equal negative 11, so that checks out. So you know this has to be correct. So um, you can look at the steps if you want to, but basically it's the, the same pattern is going to happen here. Um, so, uh, so if I look here, we have 4 plus 9x equals 31. Um, another way to kind of look at these problems is somebody once told me if you look at PEMDAS, which is used for order of operations, uh, you do it parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, uh, and then addition or subtraction. When that is when you're, um, you know, combining like terms and you're solving um, problems that are like, you know, uh, five times three plus three. What does that equal? That's when you use PEMDAS. But whenever you solve for x, somebody once told me it's essentially you're doing the opposite of PEMDAS. You're starting with the addition subtraction first, and then you're doing multiplication and division. So that's what I'm going to do here, right? I have a 4 plus 9x equals 31. If you want to, you can switch this around and get you know, 9x plus 4 equals 31 because that's what you're typically used to. But I'm just going to solve this problem as, as I see it. So I have 4 plus 9x. How do I cancel out a positive 4? Well, I subtract 4. So that will cancel out. I have 9x equals uh, 27. And then you just divide by 9 here, because again, the opposite of multiplying is dividing. That cancels out essentially. And then 27 over 9 becomes 3. And then we can plug that into the equation, see if that checks out. So 4 plus, we multiply first, right? Because that's what really PEMDAS is for order of operations. So 9 times 3 is 27, equals 31. 4 plus 27 is 31. That equals 31. So 3 checks out. So this 3 is the right answer here. So let's move to a problem that's a little bit more challenging, right? So if you look at number 4, uh, it says 5x equals 3x plus 18. And this is where I'm going to jump back to the steps here. We're looking at step 2. It says use addition or subtraction to get the variable to only one side of the equal sign. I want this x and this x and the other sign to combine to just be 1x. So how do I do that? It's the same idea as we did before, where I need to cancel out one of these by doing the opposite of what's happening in the problem. But you want to do this in such a way to where x is a positive value. Um, so I have a 5x here. I have a 3x. You always want to end up taking the number that's the largest coefficient and, and basically getting the other number to the other side with the one with a larger coefficient. So for example, I'm going to subtract 3x here because I need to cancel this out. And when I cancel it out, that goes away and becomes a 0, but 5x minus 3x becomes 2x. And we end up with 18. Had you tried the other way, for example, and you took this negative 5x, because that's what we have to do to, to cancel it out, we end up with a 0. This ends up with a negative 2x plus 18. We have two issues here, right? We have a zero here, which is fine, but then we have a negative value. And then we got end up, it becomes a mess. So you typically, you want to be able to try and get the x to one side of the, of the equation and then the number to the other. But remember, whenever you do this, you want to try and end up with a positive value here for x. 
Your teacher might tell you to do something differently. This is just what I tell my students to do. And then from here, right, we just divide by two and I get nine for my answer. So let's check that answer real fast and see what we get. So if I plug in a nine here, well, five times nine is 45. Three times nine is 27 plus 18. And if you take 27 and you add 18 to it, you do get 45, so that checks out. So let's move on to the other one. Let's change pins here because I'm getting red everywhere. So let's just kind of spread this out a little bit. So let's go to green. So, so I have 3x equals 7x minus 16. Um, there's a couple ways you can go here, and I'll solve this both ways, and you can kind of choose what you want to do. Um, we want to really get x to this one side of this equation here. And the best way of doing that is subtracting 7x from both sides. Uh, I say that because it forces the constant to be on its own here. So we have a negative 16, and then here we have a negative 4x when I do this. Uh, and then we can just divide by a negative 4 here. The negative 4 over negative 4 becomes a 1, and again, 1 times x is just x. And then when you take a, a number that's a negative divided by a number with a negative, it ends up being a positive. So, but, so and again, negative over negative becomes a positive, and then 16 over 4 becomes 4, so x is just 4. That's one way of solving this problem. Another way of solving it is we have our 3x equals 7x minus 16 is you could actually subtract 3x from the left side. We have 0 equals 4x minus 16. But then you have to add 16 to both sides because, again, we want the variable to be on one side and the constant to be on the other. And so I'd have 16 equals 4x, and then you can divide by 4. You still get the same answer, but in one of them we had one more step to do. Uh, technically, either one of these is correct. Uh, I really don't know which is the best way. Um, the simplest way is to, uh, um, to get the x on one side here and solve it. Um, but uh, th what I did here did not follow the steps above. I got x to one side, and then I had to bring the variable, uh, sorry, the constant to the other. So it's really what makes you happy. Um, anyway, so you'll choose what you, what you think is best here. But let's check our answer, right? Let's plug in a 4 here for x and see if it balances out the equation. So 3 times 4 is 12, 7 times 4 is 28, and we take away 16 from that. And if you do that, you get 12 equals 12, and so you know 4 has to be the right answer. Uh, and then the last problem I'm going to do is uh, number 6. Um, again, I know this is a little messy here. I threw in an extra problem. Um, but this is where we're going to actually just do every single one of these steps here. Uh, if you notice here on number 6, uh, I have a 5x minus 9x minus 6 equals negative 7x plus 5 minus 2. I have two x's on the left side, uh, x terms on the left side, and I have two constants on the right side. So we need to do something about that. Uh, so if we look here at number 1, it says combine like terms on either side of the equal sign. So if I look down here, I need to combine like terms. So the like terms on the left side are this 5x minus 9x. And then the like terms on the right side are the two constants, the 5 minus 2. I need to simplify those two and combine those before I really solve this problem. So what's 5x minus 9x? So well, that's negative 4x minus 6 equals negative 7x. And then what's 5 minus 2? Well, that's just a plus 3. Uh, and then from there, we can now do number 2 here. Uh, it says use addition or subtraction to get the variable to only one side of the equal sign. So I want to get the variable to only one side of the equal sign. So I want one of these x's to go to the other direction. So let's see here. I have negative 4x and I have negative 7x. Uh, I'm going to add 7x to both sides and you'll see what happens here. When I do that, this cancels out on the right side and we're left with just a 3. But notice on the left side, negative 4x plus 7x ends up being a 3x, so my x is positive. You typically want to try and make this positive. And then I just carry this negative 6 down. So I have now 3x minus 6 equals 3. So the variable's on one side now. But again, when I did this, I ended up with a positive coefficient here, uh, which means the math is probably going to be a little bit easier to solve had I gone the other direction. Now that I got the variable on one side, I want to get this negative 6 to cancel out. So typically, 
you take x to one side, you take the constant to the opposite. So you end up swapping here. So this plus uh, 7x happens, and then I'm going to end up adding 6. So notice how the variable went to one side, the constant's going to the other side. So I end up with 3x equals 9. And then right now I need to divide by 3, and x equals 3. And let's just kind of check this to make sure that's right. So let's, uh, let's just plug in 3 here. So I'll do 5 times 3 minus 9 times 3 minus 6 equals negative 7 times 3 plus 5 minus 2. Some of you might have combined the like terms here and solved it. Um, I just felt like this might be one way of doing it. So I end up with 15 minus 27 minus 6 equals a negative 21 plus 5 minus 2. And I'm going to use the calculator here to help me with this just to keep it simple so I don't make a mistake. So 15 minus 27 minus 6 ends up being a negative 18. And then what's negative, oops, negative 21 plus 5 minus 2 ends up being a negative 18 as well. So that checks out. So x has to be 3. Uh, I know this is a long video, but I think a lot of you are going to appreciate this. Uh, and if you need more help on this, just let me know and I can make another video or whatnot. Have a good day and uh, thank you for watching this. Bye-bye.